tangled up here. You already buggered? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'll hold that for yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got the tangle going here. Just whack it on and see there how we go. go. Rex Hunt. All right. You, 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 you go first. See what you got. <laughs> That'll do me. Oh, mate. Yeah, there we go. Well, I've got to go a bit further now. So you're a bit of a fisherman. You get a little bit of a fish in the off-season? Now I wish I did a lot more of it growing up. Because it is good fun. There's good little outlet, I guess, away from footy. But um, a couple of the boys in the team love it. Uh, Cooper Johns, he, he used to, like, bag on us and hate us for going fishing. And then, you know, he's gone to Manly now and he's just turned into Rex Hunt. And he's, <laughs> he just is obsessed with fishing. I'm like, mate, you could have done that when we were together, but... For me growing up, we never had um, like a PlayStation or Xbox or anything like that. I, was, I, I wouldn't know how to play one now, but um, so we're always outdoors, you know, whether it's in the backyard playing footy or at the beach fishing or surfing or whatever. So you go home now. So you, my brothers, yeah, as I said, love their fishing. So when I get home, like I enjoy it too. So when I get home, I just make the most of it. Yeah, what, 50-odd games into your career, you're an Origin winner. Last time we saw you, you're a World Cup winner. Does it all seem real at this point? Um, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. Uh, doesn't seem real. I think it's probably something you look back on uh, once footy's finished and uh, think how cool it is. But, yeah, 50 games, it's... It's a lot to achieve just in 50 games span. When I saw you'd only played 50 odd games, I was like, oh, he feels like he's played 150. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, I was fortunate to do a pretty good apprenticeship here at the Storm and did a pretty good apprenticeship playing for the Sunny Coast Falcons. And um, yeah, I felt that once I come in to play NRL that I was more ready than, yeah, I could have been. Take me back to Manchester, lifting that World Cup trophy at Old Trafford. What was that like? Yeah, that was, yeah, quite um, quite emotional, I guess. Um, yeah, I think, like, oh, yeah, our fan, like, we lost our nan just before, just prior, so uh, I think that was, for me, it was like, you know, she, we always had the inside joke to, for her to, like, um, I just always say, nan, there's a World Cup at the end of the year, you've got to hang around for that, like, hopefully I'll be there, but... Um, so, yeah, for me, that was probably, yeah, the big thing for, for nan and Pop. Um, Pop was... Pop was at home watching, and I think, yeah, for me, that's what made it very, um, a whole lot more special. But, yeah, as a kid, you've always dreamt of, you know, playing Queensland, Australia, and, yeah, to be able to do that and do it in a World Cup, that's, uh, yeah, pretty special. Did you talk to your Pop afterwards? Yeah, I talked to Pop before and after, and, um, yeah, I was, I was pretty lucky just before we went over. Um, yeah, I was surrounded by family. We had um, Nan's funeral, so... I think there was a lot of people, you know, once I got that call, they were, yeah, they were stoked and told me what it, yeah, means for them as well. And I think it was just really good for the, the family at the time as well. How was your nan as a supporter? Was she, you know, critical of your pop as well? <laughs> Do they, they have much to say about your game or they just kind of stay in the background and well uh, done, Harry? Pop's, pop's a PE teacher and, um, you know, so he's, he just loves his sport. He's a sport fanatic and he knows a lot about, um, every sport, so he's, yeah, he's been huge for all us, all of his grandkids uh, growing up. But yeah, Nan was probably more so. She always, she's a bit uh, superstitious. So I think she came to a game when I was younger, and um, I got injured. So she's like, right, that's it. That's the last game I'm going to. She thought it was her, and then, uh, yeah, then she used to say like, if I was playing bad, she'd stop watching and <laughs> stuff like that. But yeah, she was she was pretty critical. I think she was more critical of some of the haircuts I've had over the, over the time. You've got you're rocking it all right. Like you've had the shave now yeah. tonight. You got the hat on. Yeah, yeah, keep the hat looks on good. Now. We obviously see the achievements on the field at the World Cup, but so much goes on behind the scenes. It's a it's a great tour. Do you have a favourite memory behind the scenes? Anything surprise you? Any new best mates? Anything that stands out? Oh, probably maybe Liam Martin losing his phone twice in the first uh, <laughs> first week. Um, now nah, I think you know Mel was pretty. Uh, forward at the, at the start and just said, you know, everyone's here to play. Don't don't get um, salty. It's sort of at the end of the 
um, comp, we'll, we'll pick the team that we think is best for the finals. So, you know, everyone's here to play. You'll get at least two of the games. So I think that just put everyone in a, in a good mindset from the get-go and everyone was just, you know, keen to enjoy the time and, and rip in for each other. And Would you nominate a best on ground, someone who stood out of the whole, the tour? Um, best on ground, worst on ground, you'd probably say Liam Martin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the stories could go on forever, mate. <laughs> uh, we'll leave them, we'll leave yeah, them best we'll unsaid. Yeah. What about now? You're back. It's, it's footy time, it's 2023, and, and you're the man now. You're the main number nine. Brendan's gone, shipped him off to the Roosters. <laughs> how are you feeling? Um, yeah, yeah, excited. I think uh, it's been, you know, it's been very fortunate and lucky that, um, you know, for me and Brandon to, to come through the way we did, learning off, off Cameron and um, being in that position and then having to, you know, work that role together, which is, yeah, very fortunate for, for us and for the club when, um, you know, things didn't go right. We could sort of lean on each other or, um, yeah, in that sense. But for me now, it's just, yeah, exciting to, um, yeah, challenge myself and, uh, yeah, keep my, myself on the, on the park and in games. Be honest, you, you knifed him, you got rid of him, didn't you? I think everyone was just sick of um, Brandon <laughs> sleeping on their couch randomly each night. He'd just rock up with a knock at your door and, what are you doing? Oh, I'm bored, I'll just, I'll just stay here for the night. But, so hopefully he's annoying Jakey Turpin or someone in, in, in Bondi now. <laughs> Did you prefer coming off the bench, starting when you were with Brandon? What was your preference? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, I was just like, what, whatever's best for the team and um, whatever... Bellyache, Bellyache thought was best. So, you know, he's been been around for a long time, and uh, you know, he was pretty upfront with me early, like you know, whether it's you know, you don't want to just go straight into playing um, 80 minutes, and you know, you can start on the bench and then come on, and like you know, everyone, you'll be fresher than everyone, and and things like that. And and Bells has been great for me like that, um, but for me now, it's yeah, I'm I'm pretty keen to um, yeah lock. 80 minutes in each week, do it consistently well. I think, yeah, it's been a bit patchy over the last few years. Even when I was at the, at the West Tigers, I was playing 80 minutes here and there. And, um, but at the end of the day, yeah, that's probably what I want. What's the key to that then, to getting back to being that 80 minute hooker for possibly 30 weeks of the season? Like, it's, it's a toll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The way yeah. you play as well. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, it, yeah, it definitely is a toll. And, you know, you learn that over, over the seasons, the course of the. Um, because of a couple of years, that it is a long season, and, you, and you've got to manage yourself. You've got to manage your body, and um, you can't just pick your times to when you want to, um, yeah, train or, or be professional. You kind of got to commit to it, and um, that's yeah, definitely something I'll be doing this season. Um, yeah, I, I think it's yeah, talking, being open with the coaches and um, the staff on, on how I'm feeling. But yeah, I, I don't think I'll leave anything in the tank thinking about the back end and um, how I'll be feeling. It would just be like, you know, in the now and um, approach each game the same and um, see, see how things go from there. What's Harry Grant looking for when he goes out in the field? What's your kind of telltale signs that when you can take advantage of a game? Yeah, I think it might. I don't know where it sort of came from. Like, I think it's probably more when I was a bit younger, I was playing in the halves and I like to be involved and, um, you know, run the ball and that was probably my strength. Uh, chip chase. <laughs> might put that in the back pocket for now. But, um, yeah, I, I think that was probably my strength growing up. So when I sort of transitioned to dummy half, that was, yeah, probably still like, oh, I was doing that then. So I probably tried that when I was playing dummy half and then I picked up cues on, um, yeah, the times. I, I was pretty fortunate. My, my dad and... Um, my pop and my whole family were, were dummy halves, so I could I could learn off them straight away, and they um, had so many good pointers for me, and, and still do now. So yeah, I think yeah, just it's probably come from there. A lot of it's instinct, um, but yeah, I think as any number nine in the game now probably looks for that unsettled ruck or you know tired defender or um yeah late third man out something like that so when in your youth did you transition from playing in the halves to playing dummy half um bit of a long long story nah um so i had a couple of injuries when i was younger um i had like a staph infection in my shoulder 
which was uh, pretty bad. I had about a year out. Um, I had three surgeries on it. and Yeah, that, that was pretty grim at, at that time. And then I come back, played a game, and then um, broke my leg, so I had a compound fracture. So I was like, oh, I had probably two and a half years out of footy, like 13, 14, 15. And for me, I was, like, very... Um, yeah, that's when I found my love for surfing or, you know, just being outside doing things away. And I came back to the school team and I'd always played halves and then they said, oh, we got a couple of good halves, like, do you want to play hooker? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I didn't really like it, didn't know what I was doing. I think, as I said, chip chase. It was like third tackle, we are in our red zone and I didn't know who to pass the ball to, so I just chip chase and they got it and scored the next set. And I was like, oh, shit, maybe this, maybe this position isn't for me, but... Um, it took its time, like probably, yeah, 16s, 17s, like that was probably my two years where I sort of said, oh, well, if this is what I'm going to do, I'll knuckle down and, um, yeah, and that's sort of where the transition came and it's kind of weird because that's, that's the way I look at a lot of things, you know, if you, there's a lot of negatives, like I had two and a half years out, I could be like, that's so negative, but um, there's a bigger positive to come from it, it's playing, playing dummy half off the back of that, really, and if I wasn't playing dummy half, probably wouldn't you know, be playing NRL or, you know, well, like you said earlier, the origins of World Cups, so I wouldn't probably achieve that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. You downplay those those couple of years, but the staph infection was pretty serious, right? Like, at one point, didn't they say to your parents, like, you might not make it through the night? Yeah, I was, I was close to brown bread, I think. They just said if I wasn't so fit, I probably, um, yeah, it would have been brown bread, but... I was, I was 12, I was oblivious to what was going on and, um, yeah, I had some really good nurses and doctors that looked after me and, um, yeah, obviously mum and dad and uh, family support over over that little time. It was, yeah, it's probably, oh, yeah, as I said, I was oblivious but probably harder on them. Than I was going to say, you're oblivious, but what do you mean, <laughs> parents? Like, do you talk to your parents like how they felt when the doctor <laughs> told them that? Yeah, I think, you know, my... Dad's pretty cool, calm and collected, but mum would have been a bit, um, yeah, a bit rattled. Like, I, I don't know they were rattled. They probably don't tell me, you know, they don't show it, but I know talking to some people that, um, at the time that it, it, it got to them a bit. But, uh, mate, there's a lot of people that go through, um, you know, a lot of illness, adversity through their life. Talking about the water, being outdoors, you love your surfing? Yeah, have a bit of a passion for it outside of footy and um, it's come from, yeah, when I was a fair bit younger and from the family and um, just spending time, yeah, outside and outdoors and, yeah, that's probably like, yeah, you don't get to do as much of it down here given the coast is an hour, an hour plus away. And We're not having much luck here, but I, I, imagine, no, you've had, I imagine you've had better luck fishing, what's your biggest catch? What are we talking? Yeah, I bragged about that one on Instagram with the, the big tuna. Um, but me and Cheese went out, there was a guy that, um, Gueno, he, he loves the, the Melbourne Storm and yeah, me and Cheese just were like, oh, we'll go, we'll go down for a day with him and oh, it, was, it was like 117 kilos or something like wow. that. Wow. Jesus. I think so. Yeah. How long did it take to pull in? Uh, it took about 40 minutes. It was, it was pretty crazy, like, we had training the next day and I was a bit stiff. Was there much competition to sign you when you were young or did the Storm kind of, did they get you pretty easy and it was... Funny story, I think, yeah, they got me pretty easy. Like, I don't, there was no one really on the, on the radar other than early days. I was always in the Broncos sort of academy um, growing up and they had everyone, like, they had any kid in Queensland pretty well. Like, Broncos said, you want to be in the you know, junior development, you're like, yeah, I'll take the shorts and shirt and come up there <laughs> once a month. Um, so I was in that growing up and then I got to, I think it was 16, so I come back, I was playing a little bit and, um, yeah, playing a bit of school footy and I think they called Dad up and, you know, said there was potential for something a bit more, like, but not after school, just in, like, sort of 16, 17. And Dad didn't tell me, like, I would have signed in a heartbeat. I loved the Broncos growing up. Dad didn't tell me. He just said, you know, he told me later on, he just said, he was 16, 17, like, you didn't need it. Like, that was probably... And I look back and it's probably a smart move. He's like, yeah, he just said it probably... Yeah, it wasn't going to do you any, any favours in a way. Um, so then I was like, oh, yes, yeah. so I just kept... I didn't know, I was just playing footy, like, you know, striving for t to get to that point and... 
yeah, then the storm came. At, um, yeah, when I was sort of 17 going out of school and that was when I was like, yeah, that's something that I'll jump to. There's going to be a lot of Broncos fans watching this going, oh, no, <laughs> we missed another one. They missed nah. Cameron Smith famously and now they, they miss Harry Grant. Oh, I like uh, Yeah, I would have jumped there for anything. <laughs> no, nah, I think, you know, the, the thing is they had a lot of good players on their books too, so, you know, they always get the cream of the crop up, um, yeah, in Queensland, so... I think it was probably a smart decision for me to to pick the storm and um, not that I had many options, but... Uh, <laughs> Obviously, when you got here, there was Cameron and he probably played even longer than everyone thought he would. <laughs> At what point did you start to think that maybe there has to be something else on the cards for me here, I'm ready, and he's not going anywhere for at least the next couple of years? No, nah, I didn't really think that. Like, I just thought, you know, Smithy, like, he's... Mate, you, the last thing you want to do is for him to, to finish up and um, feel like he's pulled up short. Uh, but I, I played those two years, 2018, 2019. I, I played two years a good Q Cup and that was sort of where the loan deal kind of came about because, um, yeah, my dad, like, he's, he's got a little bar at home and he just sits there and drinks beer with his mates. They drive past and call in and have a couple and keep going. And, I think they do some, uh, yeah, they solve the world's problems yeah. there. So I don't know, he might have, whether he was sitting there by himself having a beer or he was having a conversation with someone else, but he's like, oh, like, I've got this idea, why don't you go to Super League for a year and um, try a different brand of footy? Because you've played, you know, two solid years of Q Cup. I was like, oh, yeah, there's a bit of merit to it. And I went to Belza and he was like, oh, like, yeah, why don't you go to another NRL club? You know, even if it's after trials, there's a lot of players that get injured and, yeah, I think... If I look back on that year now, it was pivotal because it's 2020, first year of COVID. If I was at the Storm, like, shit, it would have been cool. I would have been involved in a Premiership winning, like, squad, but I wouldn't have played, you know, any footy. Like, Q Cup wasn't playing, so that was, you know, where I would have been playing footy. So, yeah. Um, and it's a I'll, sliding doors moment, yeah, isn't it? Like, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, your whole like, career could be different. Yeah, your whole career. And, as I say, I look back on everything and timing's a big thing. Very fortunate to, um, yeah, land in the right places at the right time. I guess when you look back at that 2020 season, then did you know that you could perform the way you did when you went there? You knew you, you were ready to step up and play constant NRL and make big effects in games? Yeah, I was I was nervous, like, I was shit scared. I was like, this is so weird. I'm, you know, like, at one club and leaving to go to another club. Like, how am I going to be perceived by my teammates? Like, teammates at the Storm and then teammates at the West Tigers. Like, yeah, it was pretty daunting, to be fair. Like, I was a bit like, holy, but I was just like, I'm going here. Like, I want to, you know, leave no stone unturned and um, try and earn the respect of my teammates and the staff, not only at the West Tigers, but at the Storm as well. Like, once I, you know, played one game and I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is all right. <laughs> I was playing with Benji and uh, all those guys. I was like, yeah, this is good. 